Rent got too expensive, had to leave LA So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate Playing poker every day Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet We decided to stay a while in Austin to revenge our largest loss of the road trip so far in the last video. We do some sightseeing before heading to the card room. Check it out. We get to Texas Card House Austin and it's not just any ordinary session. We're hosting our very own meetup game. What's up you guys, back with another video. We're here at Texas Card Austin for our meetup. We're playing one, two, in for 300 max. Let's just get right into the hands, let's go. First hand of the night, I look down at ace five of clubs from early position and I raise it up to $12. We get three callers, so going four ways to the flop, which comes ace, six, 10 with two clubs. Obviously a dream board for us. Not only do we have top pair, we have the nut flush draw as well. Against three other opponents, I decide to start with a check here. For those of you that think a bet is appropriate, I also agree with you as well. You could start to build the size of the pot here, considering the fact if your ace is not good, you are drawing to the nut flush draw. Either way though, when I check, the action checks around and we're off to the turn which comes the king of spades when the action gets checked through on the flop I'm gonna go for value here against any holdings that picked up a pair of kings additionally we can get value from hands like queen 10 who have a gutter to Broadway or worse flush draws so I bet out for $26 we get one call from the player in middle position so we're off to the river which comes the five of spades obviously giving us two pair we improve and we like that so we fire out again for $78 into the $100 pot. Wouldn't blame the opponent for calling here, thinking I'm not good for an ace when I check on the flop, but he decides to fold and we're gonna take down the first pot of the night, up $60 on the session. We then find ourselves in a double board bomb pot when we unfortunately get quartered and coolered. On the bottom board, we have two pair. The other guy has a king high flush. On the top board, we have the nut straight, but he does as well. That results in us only getting back 25% of the chips in play. Don't fret though, we end up getting our chips back when we flop quads in another double board PLO bomb pot. No getting quartered on that shit. <laughs> so I guess easy come, easy go, as they say. We then look down at queen jack of diamonds and I raise it up to $15 from the hijack. The cutoff and the big blind both calls. So we're going three ways to a flop of ace, jack, six with two diamonds. Pretty great board for us as well. We have a pair, we have a backdoor straight draw, and we have the front door diamond and draw. Big blind now donk leads out for $10 and all of us put in the call. I debate raising here but I decide when the other opponent calls as well. It's best just to call here and see a turn card. Turn card comes the three of hearts. Doesn't really change anything. Big blind now leads out for $10 again and the action's on me. With a pair and a diamond draw if we're not good we could put a lot of pressure on his one pair type holdings. I doubt he's going to have that strong of an ace considering I raised preflop and he just called. So for that reason, I pump it up to $60 looking to put pressure on all his one pair type holdings. Both of the players fold so we're just going to take down that $110 pot up to $140 of profit on the session. We look down at pocket tens now. The hijack raises it up to $15 and I make the only play I think is standard here and go for the 3 bet to $45. Opponent's not done with the hand. He tosses in 30 more dollars when we're off to a flop, which comes 10, 6, 4. Bang! We flop top set. Obviously a great board because 5, 7 is a straight draw. It's a lot of ace 3, ace deuce of spade combos in his range that are going to continue here for any size bet. So when he checks it over to me, I decide to go for a C bet of $30, one third the size of the pot, and he puts in the call. Turns an even better card. It comes a 4 of diamonds. We fill up and not really worried about any hand. Both the draws I mentioned on the flop are not going to be be able to beat us even if they hit a spade an eight or a three on the river so when he checks to us for a second time i decide to go for a half pot size bet here of 75 dollars fortunately for us though the opponent finds a fold so we're not going to get any more value here but we're up to 200 profit on the session so we're here with peter and as you can see he got us in this austin fc scarf and gave us an inaugural ticket from the first game against the san jose earthquakes Peter, you're the man. I really appreciate it. You sold a bad pot, but you're going to get it in rebates. Yeah, rebates, 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 rebates. People here are great and awesome. Look at this. This is freaking sick. Huge shout out to Peter. I really appreciate the gifts, and he's going to make an appearance later in the video. Stay tuned for that. Next hand to note, we look down at King 9 of spades from the cutoff. There's one limp to me, and I raise it up to $15. And just the hijack puts in the calls. So we're off to a flop, which gives us top pair. 
King Deuce 10 Rainbow. He checks it over to me and I decide to go for a one third pot size bet of $10, pretty standard. And he puts in the call, so we're off to the turn. Turn comes a Queen of Hearts, which brings in a lot of possibilities. Ace Jack is obviously the nut straight. A lot of backdoor heart draws are picking up equity as well as Jack 9. Two pair combos like King Queen, Queen 10, stuff like that. So when he checks it to me on the turn, I decide to check behind and see what the river brings in. In position to the river comes the five of diamonds, as big a brick as I ever saw one, and now he leads out for $20. Obviously not going anywhere for $20. If he has us beat, so be it. I'm not going to be putting in the raise. He's not going to get any more money for me. And sure enough, he shows queen 10, so we turn two pair. We pay him off there, and he's going to take down that $93 pot. Nothing too exciting of note just yet. We pick up jack 10 of spades and try to make something happen by raising it up to $15 from the hijack. The cutoff puts in the call, so going heads up to the flop, which comes king jack 4 with two clubs. Pretty decent board for our range, so I decide to go for a C bet of $12. Opponent puts in the call and we're off to the turn. Turn comes a 10 of clubs, giving us two pair but bringing in a lot of draws. Front door clubs get there, ace queen, queen 9 all make straights. But until he raises and gives us a reason to be scared, I'm not going to show weakness. I bet out for $40, looking to get value from any ace high flush draws, stuff of that nature, I lead out for $40. The cut of calls for $40, so we're going off to the river, which puts a four liner to a straight. Any nine or ace will have us beat. Comes the queen of spades, not exactly the best card. Our pair on the flop that improved the two pair has now gotten worse by the river. I decided to check it over to the cutoff and see what he does. Cutoff now goes for a very polarizing bet, all in for $200. He either has the nuts or he has a bluff. Not really too sure what bluffs he'd have here, considering one of the bluffs would be the naked ace of clubs. But now that that improves to Broadway, I think we have an easy fold here, and I muck my two pair. We're down 75 bucks on the session. Pause real quick in the video. I'm gonna give a handoff to my buddy Peter. You didn't think I was just not gonna give him a bone after he gave me super cool things from Austin FC. I'm gonna give a handoff to Peter here. He's gonna take it in this next hand. Enjoy the commentary. What's up everyone, there's a $10 under the gun straddle and the action folds to us in the small blind and we look down to ace eight off, we raise the 30 and we get a call from the straddle. The board runs out five jack ace rainbow and we check to the straddle. He thinks for a sec and bets 40 into us and to me here it seems like the straddler is repping a middle pocket pair or jack x holding after seeing an, a call with aggression when check two post flop, we just call with top pair. The turn comes, the ace of spades, let's freaking go. We check to the straddle, hoping to pick up a little bit more information, uh, but he checks. The river is the nine of clubs. We think for a sec, we want to play for stacks. We shove all in, the dealer throws an interception, and the straddle insta folds. Easy game. Uh, thanks Wolfgang for letting me commentate. Awesome analysis, Peter. Thanks for being willing to do that. I think it's a super cool idea to get some of you guys involved in my videos. If you guys see me at the casino and we get into a hand, I have no problem putting you guys in the video if you guys want to, of course. Going on to the next hand, when we win a huge bomb pot with our favorite hands, pocket sevens, not only do we flop a set on one board, we flop an on both. Fortunately though, we're going to chop it versus a straight, but we win a huge side pot, so we end up making a few hundred in that hand. With $500 now in our stack, we're in the big blind, and middle position raises it up to $12. Gets three callers, and I look down at my hand, ace, king, offsuit, a premium. That's not going to go unpunished. We pop it up to $75. Only the button puts in the call, so going heads up to the flop. Flop's a good one. It comes king, 10, 7, rainbow. Obviously, having top, top, as Jamie Gold would say, is a pretty decent hand to have. He could have some pocket 10s or pocket 7s, but we're not scared of that, so I lead out for $50. The opponent pretty quickly puts in the call, so we're off to the turn, which comes the 8 of hearts. Really shouldn't change too much. I don't expect him to have too much 9-6 or 9-jack in his range. Hoping he has a hand like king-queen or king-jack, and we're going to get stacks in here. Not going to be slowing down here. I rip it all in. He only has around $100 left in his stack, and we're going to play for all of it. Opponent thinks about it for a little while before ultimately finding a call. I turn over my cards, and the four of diamonds peels off on the river. As big a bridge as I've ever seen. I expose my hand ace king of diamonds and he shows king queen off. So of course he has to call there on the turn if he's folding. That's a crime. You know what else is a crime? That we're up $345 at my own meetup game. I'm supposed to be giving money back to you guys into the community but instead I'm like a vacuum just sucking it up.
With $670 now in our stack, I look down at pocket sixes and I raise it up to $15. We get two callers, not before an angry opponent decides to raise us up to $60. I think about my options for a little while, but since there's two callers behind, I decide to put in the call, incentivizing one of them to put in the call as well. Unfortunately, both the other two players fold, so we didn't quite get the exact pot odds, but could be some implied odds if we end up flopping a set. It's likely the opponent has a strong pocket pair. Let's see what the flop brings out. It comes nine, eight, six, bang, we flop bottom set. What was that in the top left corner? New graphic alert. If you guys like the bang counter, there might be some prizes that will be awarded in the future if I hit three or five bangs, something like that. But as of now, drop a bang down in the comments if you appreciate the new graphic. Let's go. Absolute dream situation, and we can't believe our eyes. The opponent just snap rips it all in for $250. Obviously, no brainer here. I don't go into the tank. Snap call for me. I put in a stack of greens, and the opponent flips over pocket aces already, expecting to be good. Not sure why he'd think that. Turn comes a nine of hearts river, three of spades. I turn over my pocket sixes. He taps the table. All of those chips coming our way. $650 pot for the boys. Let's go. Pocket sixes worked well for us. We look down at seven, eight of diamonds from the button. Middle position raises it up to $15 and the cutoff puts in the call. I've been playing pretty aggressive this session and I'm gonna keep it up here. I raise it up to $55, that's a three bet, but we're on the button, we have position here and we like our chances. They all fold, we take down $30 in dead money, but if they call, we're in position with a pretty disguised hand. The initial raiser folds, but the cutoff's a little bit sticky. He puts in the call, no worries though, we're off to a flop. Flop comes Jack 10-10 with two clubs, actions on middle position. Not on him anymore, he checks it over to us, and I think this is a standard C bet. We're gonna have all the pocket pairs, we're gonna have the strong jacks, and we'll have some 10s like 10-9, 10 jack, 10 queen in our range. So for that reason, I go for a C bet here of $45, and he pretty quickly folds. Nice to get some value there, we take down that $128 pot, and we look down at queen nine of diamonds in the last hand of the night. Under the gun raises it up to $15, and I put in the call. Big blind does as well, so going three ways to the flop, which comes eight, four, six with two spades. Nothing to do than to check my entire range. That's what I do in the actions on Under the Gun, who fires out for $35. I decided to put in the call. We have a lot of back drawers. A five or a seven would give us a straight draw. A diamond would obviously give us a flush draw, and a nine or a queen would probably give us the best hand with top pair. I put in the call, and the other opponent does as well. Turn card is a bad one. It comes to eight of hearts. We don't approve in any way, so I check it over to the big blind. Checks it over to Under the Gun, so we're gonna see a free river card, which gives us top pair, nine of clubs, did we just get bailed out on the river? Still, I decide to go for a check. I don't think a bet is appropriate because then we're gonna get raised. We're not really getting value from too much. I don't think a six or a four will pay us off. The big boy now decides to bet for $55 and under the gun calls. I can probably get away from this hand at this point when it goes bet call, but I'm a little bit sticky. I didn't call on the flop to river a pair and then fold, so I put in the $55. Under the gun turns over ace jack of heart, so he had nothing but ace high. Big blind though shows pocket king, so he roped us in there for an additional $110. Oh well, $315 going his way. That's gonna wrap up this session. Right, you guys, that wraps up our meetup game here from Texas Card House. Got into the game for 400, out for 718, profit of 318. Here's how we're doing on the road trip. Shout out to everyone who came out. Shout out to Jack, shout out to Peter for the gifts as well. Really appreciate you guys and love seeing you on the road trip. As always, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, comment down below, share this with a friend, come out to my other meetup games that are coming up in the future. As always, good luck on the felt, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.